Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 28. In this tutorial we are going to bring in a little bit more environmental design so make it feel a little bit more lived in and we're also going to start looking at bringing some mechanics from other scenes over and also start piecing together our first puzzle. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything about game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the first thing I would like to do is just kind of close off this section for now, simply because I just want a section to work in so as we're not blinded by the light and the post-processing like this. So I'm going to take this ground, the cube, uh, probably best to rename some of these as well. So you could, should probably take the time just to kind of rename some of these. I'm just going to call it ground 001, but I'm also going to duplicate it. Hold control, press D, remember, and call this ceiling 001. Uh, I'm going to bring this up. So it's worth pointing out at this stage, this is, I'd say, not very basic level design, but it is somewhat basic level design in terms of how we're creating this. You could create levels in a 3D modeling application. It's entirely up to you, but there is a lot more you can do just using cubes like this and piecing them together. Even if it just means creating the general structural layout of uh, a level. I can see, I, I can just kind of design really quickly by doing this. It's kind of awesome. Let's see how this looks now. Okay, so we're getting there. We just need to kind of block off some of the light for now. But what I might do is turn off the directional light. And see how that looks. Okay, so we're getting there. I want it to have a very dark and eerie atmosphere. So, I mean, later on in this tour, I have a little lamp that I'm going to place on this table. And we're going to deal with that. Uh, I think that's how I would like the light source to be for now with it. So let's quickly add a texture to our ceiling. So let's just do a wooden. I'm sure there are. we've got wooden somewhere in our textures, haven't we? If not, it'll be within something we've imported. So let's type wood in our search bar. And we can take this one from the door. So let's attach this uh, to the ceiling. That'll do for now. I guess you don't have to have it exactly the same as me. Maybe you could find some other texture. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm going to turn the direction of the light back on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to bring some things across just to lock all the areas off now. Let's duplicate this one. Bring it this way to here. Stretch it out to there. And finally, I am just going to put a wall across this section right here. So take this one, hold control, press D, bring it to about there. And let's close it off. So this first section is going to be where we focus all our efforts in this tutorial. And gradually, we open up more and more of this area. So now let's bring in a little lamp and have something kind of cool here. So let's head to the asset store. And let's search for lamp. Now there is one particular lamp I do like the look of that I've already imported, but I'll show you which one it is. Uh, let's go to pricing and let's go to free assets because we only want free. And the one I found, which I felt very fitting for the game itself, is this old USSR lamp. So if you want to do the same as me, have this lamp, import, download, Whatever you want to, it's up to you. Bring it in. You can use a different lamp if you want to. Uh, let's head back to our scene and it's right here. So let's bring this lamp into our scene. Probably increase the size two by two by two. Let's rotate 180. And yep, that looks pretty decent. Quite happy with that. So now let's add a light source to it. So let's right click and let's go to light and let's have spotlight. And all we're going to do is just aim this spotlight in the general direction of the lamp. So we just need to rotate like so, bring it to round about there. Let's expand and let's have it a kind of a yellowy tint, maybe a uh, yellowy orangey kind of tint. Uh, I think I want the range to be about 15 
and intensity maybe two. I'm going to turn this light off here. And I'm also going to turn off the uh, directional light as well. Although it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, if we zoom out, for example, and turn the directional light back on, yes, we can see on the outside, but it's not going to make too much of a difference on the inside, as we can see. Let's turn it off for now, just in case. And let's see how this looks when we press play. There we go. So we can see the light bulb is illuminated and it is basically shining just there. So let's turn the uh, light back on that we had over here. Uh, point light back on. And let's rotate this just a little bit, maybe like that. And yeah, I'd say that's pretty decent. That looks okay. So the one thing I am concerned about is everything does look to be rather large in comparison to our player. So that's something I'm quickly going to touch upon now with our environmental design. As we can see, everything looks huge, where in actual fact it shouldn't be. So the way we're going to counter that is we're going to bring our first person character up a little bit but also decrease the scale on just a couple of things because yes i do think they are a little too large but again this is all your game this is the environment you're supposed to be designing it's entirely up to you what kind of effect you want to go for so while we're at it i am going to add a collider to our fireplace here uh, physics and box collider it's not going quite well because it'll need to go on the child object, which is, let's see, going to be that one. So we'll take this one here. We will add the box collider to that. And I'm also going to increase the size on the Y like so to cover it. So now we can't walk into the fire. The chair here is probably a little bit too big. So let's decrease that to two by two by two. Bring it back down to the floor. That looks okay, doesn't it? Yep. So let's check if that does look too big or too small now. Probably need to increase it a little bit then. I feel like I'm, I'm wasting a little bit too much time here, guys. So I apologize. Uh, table. Let's decrease that to about 8 by 8 by 8. That looks okay. Let's bring that lamp down just a little bit maybe too big maybe not that might be okay let's have one more quick look yep okay things are looking a little bit better now so let's bring in some more environmental design something specific that is going to be a part of the puzzle so i had the idea of uh, there's a point where we can shoot something and it shatters and I had a look around the asset store and I found something I think will fit in quite well. So let's head back to the asset store and let's look for breakable pottery. And you'll see the first result right here, ancient breakable pottery. It's free as always. So we just need to import, download, whatever you need to. And if we head back to our scene, we have pottery prefabs and here we are. So I am going to bring in a couple of these into the scene. So I'm going to bring in this one. It's obviously quite large. So I am going to rotate this 180. Uh, scale is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And let's just bring it into position here. Now, what we have to do at this point is we need to include a mesh collider on all the parts of this vase. So. Add component, physics, and go to mesh collider, and then tick convex. You can see the collider encompasses the entire object now. Just make sure you do have all parts of any vase or vase, however you want to pronounce it, uh, selected, just so every piece gets a collider. The reason being, which I will show you now, is we want to get to a point in our game where when we press play, we're able to say, shoot it, and due to the fact that we're going to have a rigid body on it, it will pretty much just do this. It will break apart. So we're going to make it do that when we get to a certain point in the game 
anyway so you don't need to worry too much about that for now but all i would recommend is just kind of set up your game set everything up you need to bring in bits and pieces environmental bits and bobs so let's bring in this one uh, point two, point two, point two, and let's select each of the parts add a component physics mesh collider convex and let's bring in another one for good measure shall we uh, let's bring in this one and have that as 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And same again with this. The vase itself uh, is not actually breakable. So I brought in one that isn't breakable. So just keep that in mind when you're selecting it. So if we go through, we can see that these ones here, these ones. So I'm going to bring in that one. Have it as 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and once again select those. Add component, physics, and mesh collider, convex. So they'll do there for now. So next thing let's take a look at is some more kind of interesting things that we can have. In fact, what I'll do, I'm gonna stick a plate on there just for now, just to give it a little bit of something else because. Why not? So let's head back to the asset store and let's search for another package which is going to be of use to us. And let's search for Blacksmith Forge. Now, I am pretty sure some of you will have used this one before because this is an excellent asset that we have used uh, during development in a couple of things. Uh, I've used it myself. It doesn't want to load. It does not want to load. Anyway, it's a free asset. Uh, just search for Blacksmith Forge, and I've already brought it into my uh, project. Uh, if we go to it, if I can find it, if I can find it, where's it gone? Uh, it's here somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. Gosh, there it is, 3D Forge. It's right at the top, Jimmy. You're blind. So in there, we have the fancy interiors, villages and towns, and we have loads to choose from. So if we go to uh, prefabs and let's go to props and we have a couple of different things that we can use here like shields. Let's have something creepy on the wall. Why? Because we can. See what I mean? It looks odd, but it could be fitting to the game itself. And over on this wall, you could have something even creepier like this thing. Let's have that three by three by three, uh, 180. It's just kind of stuck on the wall. Again, it could mean something, who knows? There's props that you can use all over the place. Floors, doors, a dais. There's, there's tons of environmental things that you can use in here. Uh, we have some lighting as well. So like a candle there, as you can see. So let's have this on top of the fireplace. It's already pre-built uh, with its light, which is really, really handy. So if we turn this point light off now, if I can select it, uh, turn it off, and you can see just how much of an impact this is now having. Yes, it's not fantastic, but let's change that. Let's have the intensity, uh, let's keep it as five. Let's have the range a little bit higher. And render mode, let's have us not in, uh, sorry, let's, important there we go so you can have that right there now then our hierarchy is getting a little bit messy but i think we'll sort it out probably next tutorial uh this light i'm actually going to have keep uh, i'm going to keep it on but i'm going to have the range as 10 and just move it into the center of the room just a little bit just so we've got a bit more visibility this is all about environmental design and what you can do so just keep that in mind so let's take this table, bring it over here, and I tell you what, let's have another, um, let's have another la uh, a little candle on there. So let's take our candle, hold control, press D, and let's bring it this way, and we'll have it illuminating this section over here. So if we bring it here, up this way, and let's rotate this table, ninety. Bring it against the wall and this way. So now we can start 
really focusing on the environmental design of our game. It's starting to look kind of cool, and I'm quite happy with this. So the last thing I want to kind of put together is like some of these webs, because I've got another idea for some webs later on in this. Uh, you may have already seen why I planned, <laughs> if you're a, a subscriber on the channel. Uh, so let's play some of these webs into position. So let's have 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, and let's rotate. And just place them in the corner. This one is a, a corner one, so let's have this in the corner. There we go. And what else have we got? So you, I guess you could have stuff on the floor as well. Let's bring this in. And let's have that as five by five by five. Maybe that's too big. Three, three, three. Bring it up slightly. So hopefully, guys, you can see just how much this is all coming together now. I, I quite like how this is all piecing together. And hopefully very soon it will make sense. So what I would recommend you do at this point is to kind of build what you have. Use the assets that you can find. There's loads and loads and loads of assets that you can find. You just need to work with them. Uh, I would recommend exploring the asset store because there is a lot to find. There is a lot to find. Lots. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to do is quickly... Press play and test out how this looks now. I think work probably needs doing. Maybe we need to adjust our... Uh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. Post-processing. <laughs> so let's quickly, uh, before we end this, adjust some post-processing. So I'm going to take uh, this one. JVSH, which is our original post-processing profile. Duplicate it once again, and we're going to call this JVSH Area 2. And this just goes to show how much of an impact using post-processing can have on your game. So I'm going to bring this onto our camera now, and then I'm going to press uh, play, and I'm going to modify it real time to see what it looks like. So I do think we need a little less bloom because those flames are a bit too much. So let's uh, decrease the intensity. Uh, increase the threshold. In fact, we don't need to increase that really, do we? Because if we decreased it, it would look like that. But I think it's fine as it is. Uh, if we go down, I want to... In let's increase the post exposure to five. But then let's also bring the bloom down to point one and let's bring the softney down and the radius down just a little bit uh, let's increase the temperature uh, increase the saturation but bring the contrast down just a little bit so we can see in our room there we go so now this atmosphere is becoming quite haunting I think uh, I think we're also going to have a fire at some point. We might uh, integrate that into an actual puzzle. But yeah, so far, I kind of like how this is looking. Uh, I might have another light facing this way because it's kind of too dark over here. So let's quickly do that now while I tell you what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So... Next time, what we're going to do is we are actually going to use those um, actual pots that we brought in. We're going to use them and we are going to create our first puzzle. So I'm thinking for our first puzzle, we'll have something here that requires a key or something. And the key is going to be inside one of these pots. So we get to shoot the pot. But what we might do is add a random function to it meaning it could be in any one of those three at any given time. So I'm going to save the scene, press play, check it out. And then, guys, we're looking pretty good now. I kind of like this. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.